All right, I'm not too sure what happened. Uh, we just went through a whole lot of troubleshooting just now, but you guys will never see. But, um... Oh, hold on. All right, guys, I have no idea what was going on, but we're back with a brand new episode of Super Mario Galaxy, and in this episode, we're actually going to finally go and defeat Bowser. It's been a little while since I've actually recorded this, not going to lie. Um, and I apologize for anyone who wanted to see more of this Let's Play, but uh, I've been also prioritizing Kingdom Hearts as of late, so after all this time, it's finally time to go get our Princess Peach back! It's time. Do you want to go to the location of your special one at the center of the universe? That is insane. You're the center of my universe. Like, literally, because it's at the center of the universe. You understand? Right? No. <laughs> but yeah, I, I mean, I don't know how many times I beat this game. I don't know how many times I've seen this cutscene. And every single time, every single time the Comet Observatory turns into an egg, I get goosebumps. <laughs> Seriously, though, this is awesome. This is what she means by the Comet Observatory being able to fly through space. And it's just so freaking awesome look at that it looks like a comet see it, it makes sense now and apparently bowser at the center of the universe was just uh a couple miles down the street that's what it looks like anywhere there's a warm field inside the castle oh, go they are inside hurry i always thought that was kind of weird when nintendo games did that when they like clearly talk but they don't nothing comes out their mouths like, Twilight Princess did the same thing. This game does it. Pretty sure there's others. And also, Mario's running animation is kind of weird there. It's like he's running so much faster. He, it's like his running animation is so much slower than how fast he's running. Bowser's Galaxy Reactor. The fate of the universe. And yes, guys, this is the last game. Well, technically, it's not the last Galaxy of the game. I, I was just about to lie heavy to you guys. There is more to do after this, but this is formally the last part of the game. And this is the way that we're going to be able to do all the post-game stuff. But, you know, for now, this is the finale of everything that we went through. You know how, in like, every single game ever, basically, um, I think the idea of a final finale of a game is to... You know, for every single level that you go through, it's always to, you know, prepare you for the finale. I, I've always liked that idea. Uh, and this definitely is is that. This is a... Not really a big, big galaxy, but this is a pretty fun galaxy. In all honesty. And I can't believe it took me about a year to actually get to this, actually. And this is... And, you, you know, I, I beat this game... So I'm, I got this in like Christmas of 2008. I don't even think I actually really told my story about how I got Super Mario Galaxy. And this is an awesome time to do it. But I got it in Christmas of 2008. Uh, there was one of my friends who was staying over at my house at the time. They had to leave though when uh, I started opening my presents in the morning. And I remember that day was just so amazing because... I wanted a Wii for the longest time. My dad had showed me that he had one. I remember seeing it on a commercial at the time. And I remember just saying to myself, I love the freaking Nintendo Wii. And I already knew that I was in love with it because it's just the motion controls and the, the themes and the music are just so amazing for the system. I, I absolutely have always loved Nintendo Wii. And Super Mario Galaxy is like the premier game for the Nintendo Wii. Well, it wasn't, a, you know, the, it wasn't the debut title, like, it wasn't, like, a launch title or whatever, but you know what I mean. <laughs> it This game screams Nintendo Wii, and I remember when I first got my Nintendo Wii, my own Nintendo Wii, Christmas of 2008, I got Super Mario Galaxy, Mario Sonic at the Olympic Games, and some other stuff that I actually really like that I can't remember right now. I just know I got the big game or something. It's, it's like some baseball game or something. Oh, freak, I forgot. Okay, hold up. There we go. And uh, I just remember having so much fun with this game. It took me a year to beat, like I've said before, time and time again, but classic Super Mario right here with the fire bars and stuff like that. But it was so worth it. I remember having an adventure, an experience. It was like I was Mario going through the galaxies and trying to 
you know, find all the stars and damn, <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. But I was going through all the galaxies trying to find uh, all the stars and it was taking me a while and realistically, it would take you a while if you were Mario, you know, it's, it's, it's space, you know, no one can hear you scream. It is the final frontier. This is a huge, huge part of our universe. And I've said time and time again, I've always been ouchy wow oh my god i didn't know i could i couldn't do that i'm sorry i didn't <laughs> but uh there's a lot of things that we don't know about our universe and in space it's it's a huge huge part of it and like i said before i've always been kind of really fascinated with space in general and mario galaxy was just the game for that i mean sonic wasn't making oh my god I have never had this much trouble. This is definitely a recording curse up to the max. You, I've had so much of a hard time recording this, uh, getting to this freaking what this um this uh this 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 part for some reason, and I am not going to be taken down today. We are going to be beating Super Mario Galaxy today. I am not letting anything hold me back. It's time to it's time to do this so we can get to the rest of the stuff. Because I still haven't gotten every single star. Like, yes, I've said time and time again, I have gotten all the stars with Mario, but I've never gotten all the stars with Luigi too, which is who is in this game. But, uh, you know, I'm going to be doing that in this Let's Play. And definitely I want to review this game eventually. And the only way I can do that is to play this... Oh, Jesus! To play this entire game. And to... You know, do everything that I've always wanted to do with this game. I always wanted to get all the stars. I always wanted to play as Luigi. Fun fact, though, it is actually easier to play as Luigi or unlock Luigi in Super Mario Galaxy 2. Because I'm pretty sure in Super Mario Galaxy 2, all you got to do is beat the game. and not You don't have to get all the 120 stars, but I don't know. I honestly need to look more into that. Still crazy that they didn't release Super Mario Galaxy 2 for the Super Mario... Uh, Super Mario 3D All-Stars. I mean, to be honest with you, I like Super Mario Galaxy 1 but more than Super Mario Galaxy 2, but still, it deserves to be a part of the collection. It's Super Mario Galaxy 2, and it's an amazing game. But, uh, now it's time for the final confrontation. Looking for Princess Peach? Too bad, because she's with me. My God, he's huge. Look at him. Oh, my God. Why is he so huge? I remember in Super Mario Sunshine where he could like pick her up with like, well, he was so small back then anyway. Maybe he's growing? But Mar Bowser is big in this game too. So I, I don't know. You know how like size and Mario kind of just like, it, it just kind of changes for whatever reason. Bowser, you know that wasn't able to get me. It's time. Once and all, once and for all. Finally, you got here just in time to see the creation of my galaxy in the center of the universe. Watch and weep. See, look at him. My God, he's huge. From this galaxy, I rule a great galactic empire with Peach by my side. It will last forever. I will rule every pitiful corner of the universe. So Mario, as you can see, I got big plans, and stopping you is at the top of my list. This is freaking awesome. Remember all those other Bowser fights though? This is the most epic. This is one of the most epic, awesomest, most grandiose Bowser fight in the entire series. And I do not mean that by hyperbole or anything like that. I love this part of the game. This got me super hyped when I was playing this for the first time. I remember when I was first about to beat this game, like, after I saw all those clips on YouTube, I was like, oh my god. This is happening after all this time. And also, this this part right here, you gotta, like, uh, you gotta spin into Bowser at the opening. Just like those, uh, those little boulders that we've seen in, like, as far back as good at Galaxy. But seriously, this music, everything about it, I love this game! But it's time to take down Bowser once and for all, and get Peach back! There's no time for games anymore. It's only me and Bowser now. 
and oh my god i don't know what it is about when songs like add the 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 haws and the freaking in the songs when they just add like this this orchestral like awesome what the freak <laughs> that's weird as heck i never had seen that happen before <laughs> God, I love that. God, I love that. If you put ad libs like that in any song, I love you. I will love you for life when I'll give you all the candy. <laughs> I don't know. But now, this is actually the final part. All that was just prerequisites for this. And uh, this is a really cool arena because, like, we're kind of inside some hollowed out star or lava or something, and it's really cool looking. Now, this this fight can be tricky if you're a baby, like how I was. I mean, I still beat this fight. I remember I, I kept trying. I never got like a game over from this or anything. And uh, I'm just I'm trying to get my coins back for some reason though. So, in this part right here, he kind of just rolls around, then he stumps on the thing, and then this is when you're supposed to be able to get him. And remember, if you take too long when his tail is burning, it will burn out. And don't do what I just did! Oh my god! Oh my god, I think I just stunned myself! No, I didn't. I, I didn't. Okay, I didn't know I had that much... See, every time I, d I beat this game, I'm just like, that's it? <laughs> like, it's a cool fight, but I was about to say, okay, I got one more in me. And then, and then, um, and then, um, yeah, he died. Dang. How the heck Bowser survives every single time? I don't know. There's a creepy pasta out there that says something about Boo or something like that. Or maybe you might just be resisting a lot to lava. But yes, guys. This is the final Grand Star. After all of this time, every single galaxy, every single star, every single person, every single jump, every single brother, after all of that, it's finally the end. And I remember when I saw this the first time when I actually played this, I, this just looks like... You guys don't understand, like this tranquil music, it sounds like it's from, from heaven. It's like a lullaby from heaven or something. And, and uh... That might be the title of this episode, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> but yes, guys, let's give one last hua. I love this game so much. And oh my god, the most epic cutscene right here. Just please watch. This is so awesome. Huh? Oh my god. Every single time I see that, I get the the most goosebumps ever. I I love that part so much. When he like grabs Peach, all those fun facts. Peach kind of just appears in Mario's hand. She doesn't like fall into it. She just kind of appears there. <laughs> if you look fast enough. But that was so like fun. See, I can't help but ship these two together. Okay, I love Mario and Peach. It's a subtle but good relationship, but Bowser is just Bowser's just going through it right now. Jesus. He said all that with just a couple. Rawr, rawr, rawr. Oh yeah. So yeah, these are stars. So what happens when the star 
it expands, it blows up. And that was a supernova. Also, that looks really cool. Yeah, this part's insane. So I was I was thinking to myself, like, huh. Bowser's making a star. We're gonna probably blow it up, so oh it's a black hole, but with the aid of our special Luma. Which I don't know what to call him. Um, you know, basically everything's kinda dying. But because of the Luma's amazing heroic courage uh, they do with something and seriously this is a super trippy scene I'm not gonna lie I can't even believe I'm doing this honestly right now. And uh, I do have something to say right here before we go on. Also, oh my god, Rosalina, you got huge! Some people are into that. Do you hear the baby stars? These newborns will grow up to be, become galaxies someday. Okay, so before we go on, I have something similar to how at the finale of my cry for a playthrough, I just had some things to say. I have something to say right now. When I first played this game all the way back in 2008 and I beat this and I was seeing this cutscene right now, I remember I was alone. I think my mom was asleep, you know, only child. You know, we were only two people in the house at the time. And I was just in the living room and I was just playing it on my like my big like box TV. And I remember seeing this for the first time. And I remember I was just in my alone, like in that empty living room, just, and I just beat this game and I came to this scene and it was the most insane thing ever. I felt like I was with Mario in this scene. I felt like I was standing and, and like in this, in, in, in the living room and I was standing in the, I was seeing this new, by the way, this is like kind of like a new universe type thing. And also, this is kind of where I want to get into, like, my little Super Mario Galaxy theory, but that's going to be after she says what she says. But I remember just feeling like I was experiencing the same thing, and it was so tranquil. It was like I was living in a dream, and it was super beautiful. I, I don't know how to really describe it, but it was like I was living in this moment with Mario. It wasn't just a video game. And the constant crying of like the, the the babies like it did signify some type of amazing thing the amazing um like beauty of like birth because you know sometimes you really think about it what, what were you before you were born you weren't here you you didn't exist but then some two people got together whether or not you like him or not and they made you there's a million a million uh, there is only a, a zero and a million billion trillion chances of you be, even being here i mean imagine how big this world would be if every single person was born like if every single person like was meant to be born you know what i mean because like technically you have a one in a million percent chance of being alive and seeing this it was just recontextualize everything and made me it wasn't like back in the day like back in the day I used to get kind of like existential with this but I didn't get existential here it was like super beautiful it was a little sad to know that the galaxies and the universe and everything that we just did in the in the entirety of the game was technically gone but it was actually kind of beautiful seeing that it was rebirthed into something new it wasn't exactly the same but this galaxy and everything super mario galaxy itself isn't the same game anymore technically super mario galaxy 2 is 
Super Mario Galaxy. I don't. I'm I'm trying to say that the universe and all the other parts that we've been through in this entire Let's Play have been made anew and something different. It's still kind of the same, but it is subtly different. I'm saying this as a Christian, as someone who doesn't believe in rebirth or anything like that. I do think this is actually really beautiful. I do think this is an amazing, amazing experience that I went through when I played this. And I don't really know how to describe it, but I feel like I'm experiencing something beautiful, a dream. It's like this is the waiting place before you're born. This is the place that is fundamentally where you make up you in the life to come. And when you think of it like that, through all life's turmoils and all of its hardships and beautiful and everything, it just makes it feel so much more important or something like that. Anyway, I just had to say that because this is a very important scene to me and every time I come to this scene, I always take a moment to just stop and think. And uh, every time it happens, like, you know, it's just like I always have something to say. Like, you know, it's actually kind of interesting. This could actually represent every single time you boot up this game. You know, it's not like every single playthrough that you play of Super Mario Galaxy is going to be exactly the same. Every single playthrough that you do of this game is actually completely different. I remember the the um the uh the what am I talking about? The um I, I I said before that my recording actually all of my recording of Super Mario Galaxy got corrupted and stuff like that. I couldn't use it anymore. That playthrough is gone, but in its place is this playthrough. And it has definitely been different. So that's what I'm saying. Like this cutscene, this ending represents could represent your multiple different playthroughs and how something can be so this much uh, it can be feel so familiar but it can be kind of different like i said i haven't had that much trouble with that last final level but this is just this is different and i think representing stuff like that is something that nintendo has never done with the mario game but anyway i'm sorry actually i'm not really sorry you could probably skip that if you wanted to, but I really just needed to talk about that because it's it just it just has a it special holds a special place in my heart to me. When stars die, they turn to stardust and scatter across the cosmos. Eventually, that stardust reforms to create a new star. And so the cycle of life continues. That is actually true in real life. But the cycle never repeats itself in quite the same way. It could become a bigger star. It could become a smaller star. So you'll see. So basically what Rosalina is saying is that the entire universe just died, but it really just remade itself. How Mario is able to kind of just sit there and see that, I don't know. Because he should be re being remade too, kind of. But, you know, whatever. And this is actually represented in Super Mario Galaxy 2. Because Super Mario Galaxy 2 isn't te te technically a sequel. It's more of like a soft reboot. I don't know. I'll play Super Mario Galaxy 2 in 10,000 years and maybe we'll play that. And stuff. So, remember the first part about the game? Well, we're back. We're back in the Mushroom Kingdom, baby. And I love this ending so much. Oh my god, it gives me so much goosebumps. You can see Guppy, you can see the bees. I mean, look at the queen bee in the background. The pumpkin, Goombas from the Haunted Mansion, Petey Piranha, or whatever. I'm not, that's not Petey Piranha. It's the other one. The one that looks like Baby. And we even got Peach back and thwarted our arch-rival, Bowser. Now he looks a lot smaller, too. All new life carries the essence of stars, even all of you. 
talking oh. about you. Welcome, welcome, new galaxy. Welcome. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was Super Mario Galaxy. The greatest Mario game ever. Well, besides Mario and Luigi Bowser's Side Story, but we can have two greatest games of all time. I, you know, as I said before, I got a pillar. Okay, so this is where I'm actually going to get into the theory, right? So, Rosalina... And you guys might have catched, caught up on this at this point in time if you've been paying attention to the, paying attention to the game. But Rosalina, I, my theory is is that she's actually Rosalina from a different universe entirely, because the fact of the matter is is that in her her um her past like diaries and stuff that we've been listening to this entire game that shows like the backstory of Rosalina. You can see like you know Toad and space pods and like toad space pods and you can actually see that uh she had a father with like a mustache and a mother that looked like princess peach my theory is because that can't actually happen in the mario series as it is right now some people think that this is a future event or something that happened but i would actually guess that that actually rosalina comes from a past version of that uh of of the um of the universe a uh, universe that might not exist anymore, but also Mario might actually be the father. But, you know, of course, he doesn't know that because this is a different universe or whatever. But the fact of the matter is, Rosalina and my honest to God theory is that she comes from a past version of Mario's universe. And that's how she's, you know, now that she's like kind of like the god of space or whatever. Uh, she's just able to go through like different universes and stuff. And that's my big theory. I thought that was insane to really think about. I don't know maybe other people will know about this i don't i can't see this as a theory that's really that hard to guess but uh yeah guys this is super mario galaxy i mean what can i say that i haven't said this this entire let's play this game is my favorite mario game of all time i played this when i was really young and even though that i am not immune to completely shattering my nostalgia for games and stuff like that i can't deny to you guys that this game is absolutely amazing amazing levels amazing power-ups amazing music the graphics are amazing even if i didn't upscale this with my special wii this wood game still looks amazing on my on my original nintendo my original nintendo wii and i am just so glad to know that i actually grew up with this game and have experienced this this game is a part of my childhood it's a part of my personality it's part of my life and i don't know how how this game has influenced me and like how i live so much in some ways but it might be the reason why i'm so much into space but like i said before I'm, dang that's a lot of black booze jesus christ i mean i didn't even get that much in my playthrough but um it might have influenced a little bit on like why i love space so much and uh Oh, Leslie Swan. I'm pretty sure Leslie Swan voiced Peach in a couple of games. I think so, anyway. But uh, this game is just, the antith not the antithesis, but this is like the poster child of like how to do a space game. This is how you do a space adventure. I have never seen a game that does a space adventure. You can take your starlight, your, your star lights, or you can take all of your these other games that, that focus on space or whatever. It doesn't get any better than Super Mario Galaxy. So thank you, Shigeru Miyamoto, Taka Shimizu, and the late, amazing Satoru Iwata. Thank you so much for making an amazing game and having this be such an amazing part of my childhood. And I can't say enough. I can't say that with en enough praise. Thank you so much for playing my game. <laughs> no problem, Mario. You're welcome. Thank you for make for being in an amazing game. Thank you for making this game. Seriously. And a new chapter has been added to the storybook. A purple comet has appeared. But yes, the guys, this is not technically the end of Super Mario Galaxy. This is just a formal ending. This this was the ending for me for many, 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 many years, though. Um, when I wasn't able to beat this game because of... Uh, you know, I was, I, I don't know. <laughs> I was just kind of, I don't know why I wasn't able to beat this game for years, honestly. Oh. Welcome back. 
I don't know why I said it like that. I knew you would return eventually. Please look down at your feet. Ooh, it's a 26. Or it's a 92. This number represents, this number you see represents the number of power stars you need to access another world. See how it's reading in green text. Whether you succeed or fail, just attempting the challenge will show something about your character. That says a lot because I didn't attempt this challenge when I was little. So that that's definitely saying something. Also, back to four lives. Awesome. Love to see that all my lives are reset every time I beat the game. But uh, this is the last like storybook, I think. Unless if you get all the power stars with both Mario and Luigi. Uh, gives you another chapter. I'm not sure. I hope we don't start from the, ch the beginning. Okay, the wish. Okay, good. Yeah, we we just uh, kind of had a real bad emotional dump last time. So I hope we can actually see something better. But anyway, though usually quiet, quite cheery, one day the girl became sad again. Luma drew close and tried to comfort her. Mama, you still have me. And don't be sad about your mama, because she's a part of you. That means she's always close by. It's like me. I love Star Bits because they remind me of mama. No, no, the girl said, unable to stop the tears. A lonely look flickered across Luma's face, but it was soon replaced by a wide grin. I have an idea. I will transform into a comet. A soaring comet that can carry you all, 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 carry you all on this journey. With that, Luma trailing bands of white soared high into the sky, and just as quickly started to plummet back down. Kaboom! Kablam! The ground shook, and a bright light poured out of the crater that the Luma had created. The bands of light twisted together to form a comet tail. And then Luma emerged, reborn as a comet. The girl could scarcely believe her eyes. But how? She kept asking. Our destinies as Luma is to transform into different things, said a red Luma who had suddenly appeared. Stars, comets, planets, we can become all kinds of things. When I grow up, I want to become a star that makes someone special smile, said a green Luma. A blue Luma chimed in. That Luma turned into a real cutie of a comet, didn't he? All the Lumas together said, No more crying, Mama. Thank you, said the girl in a whisper, and she pulled the Lumas close and hugged them. From that day on, Starbits no longer fell from the girl's eyes. The comet set forth for the girl's home planet its long tail blazing proudly behind it. Oh, there's another one? Oh, this is the final chapter. I guess we missed one. With its many lumas and telescopes, the comet was quite a sight to behold. The girl and the lumas were proud to call it home. At a welcoming party for her new luma, the girl gathered everyone in the kitchen and said in a louder voice than usual, All right, everyone, let's make a cake. A cake sprinkled with star bits. Then it will be a star cake. The Lumas excitedly began to gather the ingredients. As she watched the Lumas scurry about, the girl smiled and thought to herself, This is my family now, and I will stay with, with them until they're ready to leave the nest. And when they do leave, I'll see them off with a smile. Because that makes that's what makes a mother happiest. And now she can fly. Yeah. <laughs> that night, when the girl lay down to sleep, a soft light enveloped her and reminded her of the blue planet she once called home. But it would be very nice to return home once every 100 years to map, nap in my favorite sleeping nook. Nap in my favorite sleeping nook. I wonder what that means. I actually don't know what that means. I actually... Can anyone answer that? I really don't know. Where she sleeps? The comet carrying the Lumas and the girl continues on this journey to this very day. With more family members in tow that can be counted, it's said that the comet visits the girl's home's planet every 100 years, its proud white tail glittering in the sky.
The end. That's all. My story is finished. The way that she says that's all, it's so finale. So it can be, it, it should be painfully obvious at this point. Uh, that is, um, not only is that Rosalina's backstory, but it's also the backstory for the Comet Observatory. The Comet Observatory itself is that the entire origin is actually like in this in the um, in the story itself. The thing about it is, is that you can actually see the the bottom of the observatory actually does look like that comet that um that was at the the at the end of that story in chapter eight or whatever it was when the Luma went through the crater. So this is that place, and that Luma definitely is gone and it's kind of sad now that i think about it the story itself is is really sad like just in general you know the fact that she can't see her mom anymore and i remember the whole entire thing of her mom and her like probably her parents and everything being dead that kind of gave me some existential dread or whatever like i said you know i used to get a lot of existential dread when i was younger and i've conquered that now um i would say that saying that they're gonna be a part of me it wouldn't be enough for me though i'd still probably be crying <laughs> but i i understand what the story is trying to say that luma luma has influenced rosalina and rosalina's new family is is what she's taking care of now she is the mother of these luma she's the mother of space or the universe and that makes this entire story of super mario galaxy just super intricate it's not like any other mario game it's 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 something different and i'm trying to do something here but you know whatever but uh yeah like this is the reason why like another reason why i say like this is just one of my favorite mario games because not only is it one of the most deepest mario games but it's also one of the most beautiful in terms of its meaning or whatever but yes, guys, with that being said, that pretty much is it for Super Mario Galaxy. Um, but at the same time, it's not really it. We have a lot more stars to get after this episode. And basically, this is only the beginning of the end, I guess you could say. Well, not really the end, but we've got lots more to do. This is not the end of the adventure. This is... We still got some road to travel, I'll say that. But thank you guys for watching this uh, Let's Play so far. Be come back, come back next time for some, you know, some other stars that we're gonna be able to get for, uh, next time with all the um, the extra stuff. I don't know if I'll do post commentary. I might. It may. It depends. Since I've already done it, there's really nothing to commentate on uh, in terms of like live. But I don't know. I'll see. But uh, with that being said, guys, thank y'all for watching this episode. Stay tuned for the next episode of Super Mario Galaxy. Stay tuned for some of my other videos. Subscribe to my main channel. But with that being said, if you guys like this video, like this video. Subscribe if you want to see more. All my social medias will be in the description down below. But with that being said, guys, thank y'all for watching. Have a good night or day whenever you're watching this. Asta.